addressed. Question number three, Andrew Little. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his response when asked, did he think he was failing New Zealanders in mental health? Quotes, no, no, I don't think we are failing New Zealanders. If so, is he saying that mental health services in New Zealand are in an acceptable state? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes. Ensuring New Zealanders get access to the mental health services they need continues to be a priority for this government and full recognition of the growing demand and complexity of meet, meeting all mental health needs, but there is always more to do. Okay. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Is he aware that the number of people needing mental health services has risen 60 per cent under his government, while mental health funding has risen less than half as much? Yeah, that's right. The Honourable, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, there is uh, plenty of measurement now that, that shows that there is much greater awareness uh, and more yeah, prevalence, more measured prevalence of uh, mental illness. Uh, but, of course, services have expanded. For instance, the number of people treated for alcohol and other drug uh, addictions, including amphetamine, has almost doubled, almost doubled to 48,000 since 2008-9. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. What is his reply to Nancy Daly, a mental health nurse with 40 years experience, who says, quotes, it's worse than I've ever seen it before. Nurses can work up to 15 hours a day, double shifts on a regular basis because we're so short staffed and we're short of doctors. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, overall there are a great deal more doctors and nurses in the health system, and I would suggest that if uh, staff are under that kind of pressure, they need to be consulting with their employers about the suitability of working those hours. Mr Speaker, we fully understand there is pressure on facilities and staff. Uh, and that is why the spending on mental health continues to grow. But bear in mind, it's not just about the mental, acute mental health services. There's a great deal to be done. There's a great deal is being done and more to be done in prevention and in dealing with the large pool of people who are designated as having some mental illness who are in the welfare system. Read the speech, Andrew. It's all Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. What is his reply to the person quoted in the People's Mental Health Report as saying they can't get the help they need unless they're on the verge of suicide and quotes, I guess the budget just doesn't stretch to hope? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, if uh, they're feeling that kind of distress, of course, we'd want them to get the help that they need. The member, may, the member probably does realise, though, that in, in, any, in some cases, there are differences of view over what help is appropriate and when that help is, when that help is best available. And our, we have skilled professionals in the mental health area who are always called on to make difficult judgments, and sometimes families and uh, sometimes families and patients don't agree with those judgments. You should be backing the mental health workforce. Supplementary order. Now, there is a significant level of interjection coming from both front benches. It will cease. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree with his Minister of Health that the 500 people who shared their stories with the People's Mental Health Review, including many who have lost family members to suicide, are, quotes, left-wing anti-government protesters? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't believe the Minister was referring to those people in that way. Supplementary. Order. <coughs> Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Does he acknowledge that, in addition to a lack of funding in mental health, there is also a lack of coordination and access, meaning people don't know which door to knock on when they need help, and too often the police and the justice system end up picking up the pieces? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, the, the uh, issues around the overlap with the police and justice system are well understood and being acted on uh, because in some cases inappropriate uh, people have been dealt with inappropriately. 
uh, and we're being, but we're being much more creative about them than saying that in the case of the members' policy, uh, because there's that the best thing he can do for Māori who are caught up in the justice system is give them their own prison. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. After nine years, does he really think a five-year quality improvement initiative starting in a couple of months is an acceptable response when we've got doctors like Dr Anne-Marie Cullen saying it can't take five years, things will go wildly wrong? Can't we have some fresh thinking now instead of five years' time? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, of course, that's not the only measure, but it is an important thing. It is an important step to take to ensure that you have high-quality services. No point in having uh, services that aren't effective and don't achieve results for the patient. So alongside that initiative, of course, there, are, there is uh, more funding for acute services and, and, and for uh, prevention to try and try and uh, prevent people getting into the situation where they need acute services. Question number four, the right